Hi, I'm Jason Hobbs. This is example 25 of how I organize a digital marketing strategy. Now, this time we're doing version 2.1 of American Handbook by Marianne Datesman. So sometimes I present a strategy and I have to go back and do some tweaking after presenting it to the customer, right? So what's the point is to use strategic planning to save resources. And my current procedure consists of six steps as far as how I organize a digital marketing strategy. So we start with the research and I'm not showing the SWOT chart, but the point of the research is to put together a SWOT chart and using the SWOT chart, we then map out the goal of the strategy the customer point of view, which is a singular point of view, and their pressing problem. And some of the questions, some of the reports that may go into the makeup of that strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, and it's gonna always be contextual. It's gonna be specific to each individual brand. Now, 1.2, it's the goal. And that's to educate Americans on the six basic American cultural values in order to sell the American handbook, right? And the customer point of view is Americans that are curious about the six basic American values and the lack of quantification of, you know, what are the American values and the explanation of the six basic American cultural values. So there's a lack of quantification for many people that haven't come across Marianne's life's work, which is the American Ways, four editions of that book, and the introduction to American culture for ESL students specifically. And then now she's writing the version of that book for Americans, which is called American Handbook, What Your Grandparents Want You to Know. And so that's the pressing problem that the book solves. And the digital foundation is, it starts out through the website. And so the homepage is specific to the six basic American values. It runs through them after explaining, you know, these are the, or this is the mission. And the way that we approached it, or the way that I approached it as far as with the homepage, and we're using the Genesis theme Essence Pro, which is 130 bucks if you've never bought anything from Studio Press. And that allows me to just put together some homepage widget areas, as well as uh, populate a top and a bottom navigation menu, and make sure that those pages are available. And as you scroll down, this is what you see as far as it goes through all six of them. And we're gonna add some media, but I'm still kind of working through that. Here is the lower section when you continue to scroll down on the homepage below all six, then we have the introduction of George and Marianne, because they're the ones behind it, with a link to the first book that she wrote, the aforementioned American Ways and Introduction to American Culture, as well as to the page on the website, which is the six basic American cultural values, and she explains what they are and, and explains the history of them on that page. And then I guess the, the gist of that second paragraph is they view the basic American values as part of their heritage. And so they're worried, they're concerned about making sure that they're able to pass those along to future generations, right? So if you're interested as well, and maybe you'll consider supporting their mission by purchasing access as five bucks for the digital version of American Handbook. And you, you get to come along on the email conversation as well as as she completes the process of writing this book, then you'll get each of the different signposts. So the, the first six chapters, the first six rough drafts of the first six chapters, those are all put together for folks as they sign up. And then as the entirety of the first 12 chapters is completed, she'll release that. And then once it's final edit, she'll release as well. And then if she does future editions, we'll deal with that as we go. We added our video as well as an explanation between the two books. I wanted everyone to try and under, I wanted to try and help as many people as possible, kind of put them in context. If they were already aware of the American Ways book, then we wanted to try and quickly put it in context for them by broaching the subject of, hey, is this the fifth edition, so to speak, of American Ways? And it's not because 
the two books are written by the same author about the same subject for two distinctly different audiences or readers or learners. And number one is Americans. Number two is English as a second language students. So, and here are the, the two. Now the digital store, the idea is to make it friction free to buy. And so like if they click that button of the, it's still the, the rough draft of the book cover. We're going to have an updated book cover by a professional designer at some point. I just threw that together. And then support our mission, explanation of who they are, what their mission is, kind of, you know, does this relate? Do you, is it something that you're interested in? If so, then here's the plan. And obviously March 1st of 2019. And the goal is to create a community of people that are supportive of the sharing of the six basic American values with Americans for as part of the heritage moving forward. So here, if they want to buy, then I want to support your mission with my $5 purchase. They click that button, they can buy multiple and you know, give them away to friends and family. They just give us an email address for each and we assign it to that email and they get to follow along. Once you click that button, the red button, then it takes you directly to the checkout page. So it already puts it into the cart and it says, okay, here, we're ready to roll. Um, you know, what's your billing address, et cetera, et cetera. Now the media archive, the blog page is where we're running all of that through. Ever since day one of vintageamericanways.com, they've had content that she's written specifically for the blog and she's continued to update it over time right and so those that's where we just keep everything going through so as we add video in the future that will likewise be added to this primary channel here and here are a couple of the prior posts before that and the audience a couple of quick lessons here that i picked up so if you're going to build an audience then you're moving from the advertiser model where you are renting access to other people's audience and now you're organizing and building a relationship with your own audience directly right so the way that we do we approach that is first off you have to take a deep breath you have to be relaxed and be yourself first and foremost so the goal is to document the story that plays out over the years and just start at the beginning. It's the easiest place to start, right? And then document what happened over time, telling your story and you're going to get better at it with repetition. Big point though is number two, which is commit to and deliver a weekly list of media deliverables. If you wanna be successful, you have to be yourself. A great starting point is to start at your origin story and document your story from there moving forward. And you have to commit to and deliver that weekly list of media deliverables week in and week out. That's the that's how you actually organize and grow your own audience. So the way that you do that is you focus on your customer and how that manifests itself is you create video, audio, and written so that that customer, regardless of what they want, how they want to consume it, every episode they're able to consume it their preferred way and understanding that they, that may change their preferred way of consuming it may change over the course of a day or over the course of hours, right? And then the other part is you have to have that consistent committed action week in and week out. That's going to, because that's what the the customer finds it interesting and they want to you know, continue to hear about it, then you have to, you've made that promise, they've signed up, now you have to deliver on it. All right, so the media plan 3.1, the audience point of view is Americans curious about the six basic American cultural values. Some are going to be curious about it because of the politics, etc. and they're just, they've started thinking about American values and you know, how do those quantify? And so they go to Google and they start, they find, the American values page on the website for vintage American ways. And they read through it and they read the history, et cetera, et cetera. And so from there, we're going to have the ability to engage with them further. But a lot of what we do initially for that initial audience point of view is to get their attention, right? And we're going to be doing that on different other places other than just the website. So, the show strategy is American values in the new, this is tentative, it, each of which is a presentation explaining the situation along with a takeaway as an American, you know, for an American viewer.
And the way we're creating those is we're doing a video presentation using Soapbox by Wistia. And that allows us to create the video, which we can extract the audio and create a written and images version as well. The show format is that just like I'm doing now, the person presents a slide deck, right? And the show schedule is once a week. Now, the media creation process is all about attention. So I talk to one person at a time and I learned this over time because you can't try to be everything to everyone because then you end up being nothing to everyone. And part of attracting your ideal person is repelling those bad people, the ones that, you know, are, are a bad fit for you just to save you and their time and trouble, right? And then people improve through public experience and repetition. Big lesson I've learned, this is one lesson that I've, you know, learned repeatedly for more than 12 years at this point, which is you, you have to put the public experience part is extremely important because you have to actually let the market see it in order to, and you can show it to one or two people or a focus group of friends or, you know, whatever, but end of the day, until you make it public and let people actually consume it and share their, share their view of it, um, then you're not going to get as much value in my mind or from what I've found my experience. So you want to make and share your video every time. This is something that a motto or, um, you know, marching orders that I personally adhere to and that I also you know, recommend to clients as well. So the idea is you want to have a creation process and then you want to iterate it. And the, the big imperative is that once that process is completed, like once you complete all the steps, you have an output. There is a creative composition, a single creative could be, you know, a 10 minute video could be a two hour movie, whatever. But once you complete it and it's going to get you're going to refine it over time because you want to make it as flexible as possible to be able to accommodate you and what you want to do and what tools you have available, as opposed to you have to go and match everything that I have, you know, that I've built up over 12 years. So plan the video, shoot the video. I plan it into a slide deck using Google Slides, and then I shoot the video with Soapbox by Wistia. And because I have the pro plan of Soapbox by Wistia, I can download the MP4 file and edit the video using, I just use iMovie currently. Now, I publish the video to jasonhobbsllc.com, my website, and then I distribute the video to other websites on the web promoting the video some can be paid some can be free but the point of it is that you get more eyeballs so to speak to that media now slides and soapbox that I, where i'm recording them and so what i do is i use that to out of iMovie export the deliverables and so an example of a list of deliverables is and i treat this kind of like the buffalo when you have the the vi main video episode we're going to treat that as a buffalo and use as much of it as possible use every part is what the indians did right so the video clip it's a vertical for Instagram, 60 seconds, another one for Twitter for of 60 seconds, an audio version for anchor.fm, a written transcript of all the audio for a written post, images, each with a pull quote from the episode, Twitter, Instagram post for the episode where you have a series of images that are each has a matching sentence or two, maybe a paragraph at most, telling a story over the series of images. Now, the process in this instance, tentatively, that we're going to use is that the customer, George, outlines the episode as a slide deck and then records the episode using Soapbox, just like I do, right? And then from there, I'm going to edit the episode in iMovie, and then I'll publish, distribute, and promote the episode using that deliverables list that we'll agree upon. And then from there, we're just going to iterate it over time. Now, the media distribution, the goal is to give it, the people what they want, where they want it, how they want it every time they want it, right? And so the way that we approach that is wistia.com as far as for when we're embedding on the actual website for vintageamericanways.com, and then we're uploading natively to Facebook brand page as well as the YouTube channel in the future. Audio, we're going to be doing anchor.fm shortly, and we'll use that for the podcast, which will automatically distribute the podcast to 10 podcasting platforms for them. 
the written images, vintageamericanways.com forward slash blog, which they've, been, they've had going since the website first launched. So the prospects, you have to have an offer for them in order for them to be a prospect for it, right? In the customer attention lifecycle, we have to engage with customers as they pay attention to this brand and their offer. And that's going to play out over a life cycle that's individual to each of the different customers. Some will play out long, some will play out short, some, etc. All right, so the digital offer, I don't use the four Ps of marketing, like I learned at Valdosta State University where I got my marketing degree. Since then, I've learned through experience as well as from initially the, the explanation was for solution access, value, and education. I first saw that from Greg Ciotti when he was at Help Scout as the uh, lead marketer. So the solution in this instance is that so paying five bucks, they're going to get access to the conversation behind the scenes. They're going to get each of the different signposts of the creative process as she completes this book. And the idea being that they consider the six basic American cultural values as part of their heritage. And it's something that they're interested in supporting that and the continued, it's continued study. I mean, it's been Mary Ann's life's work, right? So the access is through vintageamericanways.com forward slash buy dash American dash handbook, which you can see here. If you click the American handbook, um, book cover, a rough draft one that I just threw together. We're going to have a designer do it. But if you click that, it'll take you right to checkout. But if you scroll down, you'll see the explanation. So you join the community and you know share your feedback, collaborate behind the scenes. March 1st, you receive the finalized first draft for all 12 chapters together. And then later in 2019, you're the first to receive the completed American handbook and all for five bucks, which is a great way to support these grandparents that have been curating this information as far as the six basic American cultural values and along with a bunch of first party resources. All right, so the value is they get access to the digital version of the book and they get access to behind the scenes conversation as part of the community that the person that's life work has been working on the six basic American cultural values, right? And the education is what are the cultural values? Why, what's their history? What's their importance? Now the customer attention cycle, everybody starts out as a stranger. From there, in some form or fashion, we're going to have people identify themselves as an American, as an ESL student, or as a teacher. And then based off of their actions, we're going to let them indicate their interest or lack of interest in becoming a qualified prospect because we're going to make the offer to the qualified prospects, obviously. And then obviously those that want to become a customer, they purchase for five bucks and they can buy multiples and give them away as gifts as they want, however they want to support. And if they just want to support us with five, that's awesome. You know, we're going to bring them along for the ride, so to speak. As far as for customers, we handle that with the customer conversation as well as the customer feedback loop. The customer conversation, the goal of it is to relate to people. And the way that we're approaching that is to be helpful. Segment customers, remember as they tell you about themselves and what they like and what they dislike and what's important to them and what's not important, remember it as a brand. And that's where the segmenting customer points of view come from. And then the qualify the prospects, and then make contextual offers. The idea isn't to talk anyone into anything, it's to give people an opportunity to buy something that they wanna buy. So the customer conversation, we're using live chat and email through Drift, and then we also are including the phone where necessary, and then write message we're also using to start to get to know people as well. And you can see there's an example of that question. And at this point, if they're an ESL learner, then we're going with that. If they're a parent, a teacher, or a grandparent, or if that's how they identify themselves, we're starting with the assumption that they're an American unless they decide to you know, tell us otherwise. The customer feedback loop, email each customer asking on a scale of one to 10, how likely are they to share this brand, right? And I use gatherup.com. The, if they reply with a one to eight reply to the question, it puts them into what I refer to as a customer service queue. Nines and 10 replies are thanked and invited to share their thoughts publicly and given shortcuts for their convenience to do it as well. So the campaigns, 
I have three basic categories for campaigns currently, get attention, keep attention, and administrative. And I'm gonna show you an example of each. So to get attention, the example is break the ice. So in this instance, we're going to have the get attention ads and content, media, whatever, it's going to be around the subject of history and importance of those six basic American cultural values. And we're always looking at it from the individual point of view as the goal, because you know individual freedom is one of the six basic American cultural values. So another thing that we may very well do, we're doing a test currently between myself, myself and George R, and we're going to be creating some episodes which are titled tentatively American Values in the News. And it's going to draw on George's expertise over the years. And it's going to be, should be pretty interesting. I'm pretty excited to get the test out and kind of see where we go from there. So the keep attention is a two-way conversation. And the way that they trigger that is by buying, right? So in this instance, they join that two two-way email conversation between Marianne and George Daisman with their mission supporters. And the trigger is to purchase the digital version for that $5 pre-sale. And what happens is when they buy in WooCommerce, then WooCommerce tells Zapier, which tells Drift for an email playbook to go ahead and launch, which will bring them along, catch them up on the conversation and help them understand how it's going to play out because it's going to play out weekly, right? The administrative Example, it's definitely link building. I believe there's a lot of low hanging fruit available for vintageamericanways.com, working with a reputable link builder. There's a lot of potential ties between vintageamericanways.com and a lot of .edu and .gov. Uh, loads of opportunities in my view. So if you wanted to do it yourself, it's gonna be right around 827 to start and then around 320 a month. So liquidweb.com, and it's gonna grow from there. I mean, we're using the beginner plan for of Liquid Web's managed WooCommerce, which is only 39 bucks to start, but they're really, their, their primary managed WooCommerce starts at 250 a month. And you're gonna to wanna to get to that because there's a lot of additional firepower included in that. Once you get to 750 a month, then you have your own like, developer type of relationship. You'll have to check into it, but there's just a lot of additional firepower that's thrown into it by you know, managed with commerce hosting as you move well up into the price plans. So the 50 bucks a month, but they start you out at 39 and it's a great plan. I'm using it as well as this client that I had just went through, they're using it as well. 50 bucks a month for drift.com, that's for the live chat and email, wistia.com for better video hosting and analytics in my mind. Everything I put onto the direct website of the brand, I always use Wistia. Gatherup.com for the customer feedback loop. Yoast.com for the premium SEO plugin for WordPress. You're gonna want it. And there may be some additional add-ons that you'll want, you just wanna check. They're tip, I mean, it's only 90 for their flagship. I mean, there's a lot of really good stuff for a really good price. 300 bucks a year for Wistia forward slash soapbox. That's the Chrome extension I'm using to record this that I'm also, and at least the initial process that we're putting together for George for the uh, American Values in the News series um, is gonna be using Soapbox as well. And the studiopress.com, we are using the Essence Pro theme. That's 130 bucks if you've never bought anything from Studio Press. Write message, we just rolled that out. Segment your audience, personalize your messaging. It's right at $79 for a month for the very smallest of their premium lane, if you will. So if they have three different lanes based on how busy your traffic is, then they give you different stuff, right? And in that fast lane, if you will, the, the passing lane, which is the, the most expensive one, that's 79 at the minimum, and then it grows from there based on traffic as it grows, but it's definitely very powerful. All right, so if you have questions, definitely feel free to email me or you can text give me a call, leave a message. If I don't know your number, I'm not gonna answer, but I will return messages as soon as possible. Ooh, this is example 25 now. So example 26 will actually be out Wednesday, January 16th of 2019.